Hi everyone, welcome to the live uh, product design student challenge. We have over 30 package designs to review all this, your work that you submitted. And I'm very excited to do this because there are some that are just amazing and I can't wait to dig into them. So as usual, I'm gonna take a few minutes to let people get the live notification and feel free that make sure they have time to join. So I'm gonna go on my other computer like I do all the time so I can see your comments on my other screen. So if you wanna make comments or anything during this live broadcast, I should be able to see it. So hopefully everybody's doing well today and just seeing who can hop on live. This is a little bit of a different time. I'm used to doing this at two o'clock standard Eastern time. So we'll see who I get at 10 in the morning. So let me see if I'm live here. There I am. So now I can hear and see what you're saying and doing. So just say hi if you're live. And I know it takes people a couple of minutes to kind of get that notification. But in the meantime, I'll stall for about three minutes and talk about kind of some projects I'm working on. So I just finished editing the very last lesson for this huge 10 hour course that's coming out. Should be able to launch it by next week as long as I get approval from Udemy and Skillshare and they have to kind of approve classes. But it is 10 plus hours and we go over all of these projects. We're doing magazine editorial layout design. We're doing an entire advanced project, four hours of an advanced project where we do the branding and everything that you would need signage, lanyards for a conference, for a made-up conference. We're going to be doing that together. We're going to be doing badges and logos and package design. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this challenge because I'm going to be teaching a little bit of how to do this package design pro uh, product you see right here and of course book cover design we're doing three book covers in this class and also even an album cover because why not so i just picked some of the most popular graphic design projects and decided to feature those in this upcoming course so be on the lookout for that it's going to be a project-based course i think it's going to be called uh, master graphic design through projects it's going to be beginner all the way to advanced i actually have a dedicated advanced section for those who are really looking for a challenge with that conference branding. So one last thing as people kind of join, seeing some people kind of comment. One last thing, if you're a student on Skillshare or Udemy, one of the things I really, really enjoy is reviews. So if you just have a moment after the live broadcast or after you're re-watching it at a later time, if you've enjoyed the time we've spent together and the kind of critiques I do on these projects, please leave a review on my courses. It really helps me out to continue to do this for a living. I love teaching, this is my passion. So now that my pleading is over, now we can get to the good stuff. I have an entire folder of goodies here. So let's go ahead and close all this down. So project-based class, because so that's the class I'm coming out with. You can see all the different um, projects we're doing. I just finished that. It was uh, it's almost two months of work, so I'm so glad to be done editing. But let's go ahead and do this. We could do this in alphabetical order. Revert, or yeah, we'll start with, uh, I don't know why. I guess I have a space there, so I guess that it's not exactly alphabetical at first. But we'll start with Julia. So uh, let me see, that's probably the best thing to do is to go ahead and bring these into Photoshop and see how that looks for everybody. And I wonder if I can go ahead and get my little red marker going, just in case I wanna highlight something for you guys. Let's see if that is good. Let's make sure the opacity is up on that. Doop. There we go, that's probably thick enough. Okay, so Julie, I really enjoyed hers. This is the back, so let's take a look at the front first. So she emulated what would be a clear kind of see-through to the product. So you just have to imagine that being clear plastic and you can see the product. It's really hard to emulate that. I guess you can always go in Photoshop and try, she tried to emulate that with kind of this drop shadow around the edges, but it's tough to emulate lighting and drawing that on. Um, but I think they did a good job at emulating what would be a final package design. And so I asked her if she did this kind of these leaf patterns, because these are quite lovely. I love the illustration here. It's uh, very whimsical and it's a great pattern. It's a not, it's not a busy pattern. It's perfectly spaced out. And she did it herself in Adobe Illustrator. I thought that was really cool that she kind of hand illustrated that. And I love how they have different contrast here with the um, the leaves here. So you have small ones, you have large ones. There's just lots of variety and you don't feel like it's a repeat pattern where it's the same pattern over and over. It feels a little more unique and custom. So I really, really appreciate her pattern work here. 
and also wonderful typeface here. It's loose. It's fun. Uh, I think it goes really well here. There's even kind of a, uh, a little bit of a slab serif here, maybe like an Archer Pro or something there. And I think that kind of has a fun little personality to it. And I think both of those typefaces are really good. And notice the tie-in here between these two typefaces, kind of using the same ones. And same here, the tie-in here. So you can kind of see some of the similar fonts being used throughout. And that looks really good. I love her badge here, her little seal. That looks great. It's not too big. Everything is really well balanced and in really good positions. So I really en am enjoying her layout here and her colors as well. So let's take a look at the back. We have a lot to review today. I like this diagonal, kind of breaks it up. I think if you were to leave this as a square, it would be a little bit more, it wouldn't be as exciting. So I think I really like this kind of diagonal, kind of breaking up the mold a little bit. I would just be careful with your spacing just right here in the end. I would even make this typeface just a nudge smaller. So you just have a little more room between the D and the bowl. And I would even maybe draw in a drop shadow for the bowl very, very light. I don't like heavy drop shadows, just like a really light, just to make sure that bowl doesn't look like it's kind of floating, that it's kind of grounded on the texture. And I really like this little badge here. You could probably afford to make it even just a tiny bit bigger, you know, not too much bigger, but kind of, you have a lot of open space there. And ingredients, everything else looks good, wonderful type. I like kind of this two-tone look, and I teach that in my upcoming package design section in the project base class. Uh, this kind of two-tone look and how it can really be beneficial in a layout to break it up. So you're not using the same color all throughout, but this kind of white section gives your eye a break from all of the orange, and it works really well in contrast. So I just want to make sure everybody's hearing me. I'm not seeing a lot of comments, maybe just because not, not a lot of people are able to make it live. But just let me know if you're able to kind of hear me, if my microphone's working, just making sure. So wonderful submission, Julia. I really one of one of my favorites really enjoy that orange so let's see Luis so she did this she didn't do this in Adobe products I believe they did this in um, kind of some open source I can't remember the exact name but it was a free open source software um, so they're still kind of in that learning process and they wanted to kind of go for the darker vibe but just for and and, and when you print things they always tend to print darker than you expect almost always. I'm always surprised when I get a print product back. I'm like, that is a shade or two darker than I expected. And that's just how ink is because we're looking at these bright computer screens and we're kind of tricked into thinking our product is going to be coming out brighter than it is. So I would definitely like, I know you're kind of going for the dark mood, but I would definitely lighten it up a little bit and maybe be careful with your uh, drop shadows here because you already have a lot of dark, rich colors. And then when you add a dark shadow that's a lot of the similar elements so I, I would i don't even think you need a drop shadow anywhere i think if you were to flatten this out maybe have a little drop shadow here to make that look like layered uh the photo layered i think that would be um excellent there but i do like your composition i like the border i really like the centerpiece i think the image is good i would definitely just work on lightening everything just a little bit you could still keep that dark moody mood you could also even get this printed on like a linen blend texture so it kind of gives you that dark rich you know organic feeling to it without having to darken um, the the actual print or ink as much but i really enjoy this layered kind of look in this composition. I kind of like the square shape that kind of comes out and breaks the mold of the square. I think that's really lovely. So yeah, just kind of keep keeping a watch on those drop shadows, remove the ones that you feel like are not necessary. And I believe that would be around the type for sure. But I really like her attempt there. Okay, Naaman. I think some of these are brand new and I, I look at some of these ahead of time and some of them I try not to look at them too long because I want to give you my first impression of kind of what I think of the product. So we have this nice rosé kind of dark chocolate 70% I was able to read and digest everything. I really enjoy this gold look here and the triangles I think it's a really cool interesting geometric shapes and patterns I think it's really well laid out. I think this would be really great if it was real gold foil stamping. That would look really, really lovely here if that was a finish because it would catch the light in the store and really draw your eye there. 
And I know it's more expensive to get gold foil stamping, but when you have a product, especially an expensive product, it's worth the extra cost. And I love the type here. Let me see if I can get here. This is wonderful type. I like kind of your little inlays here. You're kind of shadowing here. That's a wonderful, beautiful high-end finish to your type. And that would be wonderful if, and you probably already thought of that, is having a little bit of the foil stamping kind of showing off in those inlays into your typography. And I love the geometric pattern up here. This is a really wonderful piece. Um, the only thing I would even pick on is just maybe uh, close the spacing between your dark chocolate, maybe tighten the spacing just a tad since it is lowercase. Just there's something about this. Maybe there's just too much spacing here. I don't know why that's bothering me. I would definitely make 70 a little bigger just because people really try to find out that information before they buy chocolate. It's something I love chocolate and it's one of the things I look for is well is how dark is it. So that's kind of a big part of what people are looking for in the product. But I think this is a lovely composition and this is how it looks on the mock-ups. So this is the top and this is the dark version, the dark chocolate. So I I just I think this is probably my favorite part of this is the the rosé. That the, the type just looks really high end and elegant with the little detailing inside. So wonderful. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, meals. Okay, so this one was really fresh. I like this one. How fresh is that? Just it's very refreshing. I think the only so this is chips and lemon mint. And I love the composition. I love this diagonal kind of box and it's high contrast so you have this brown color and then you have light colors here so you have this two-tone look that looks really well in package design for the reasons i said before it breaks up that layout i really like this top up here snack sto store which i'm probably pretty sure you did that on your own i love all these lines that go across i don't think it looks busy i still think it looks clean my only idea is okay so are you selling lemons or are you selling chips so i would definitely maybe have a lemon Maybe a lemon right here with their mint leaf. and But you need to have the uh, picture of chips somewhere because that's the main product. So I definitely maybe lessen the impact of the lemon picture and make it smaller right here and then do your chips right here because right now it looks like it's a bag of lemons. But it looks lovely. I mean, the pho photography and how you put it together looks lovely. But you got to remember the product in terms of, of featuring that. So I like the, the mock-up and how you have the chips on the side. This all looks really lovely. Really enjoying this light blue and brown. Those colors just naturally go really well together, and it's a pairing I've used a lot in the past. So your colors are excellent. Your typography is excellent. I love that script typeface, and you paired it with a wonderful, simple typeface. So great type pairing there. So let's see what your other things look like. So this is it not on the mock-up, so we can kind of see it a little bit better. And I'm kind of enjoying how that's, uh, I guess that's the same typeface right here and here. And if so, that's great. And I think that's just, I think he has one on a lighter background, which I kind of like the other background better because I think that blue and this blue fight each other. But I kind of like, I don't know why, I just like the first background I looked, like, I looked at the best, even though I really love this shade of blue. It's quite lovely. So another fantastic project. He gets better and better with each Time he does something. All right, so now we're getting to into the A's. So this, let's go ahead and look at the package design or the mock-up first. We can really kind of get an idea of how it looks. And so Blackberry Current Beautiful Tea. This is stunning, and I think I believe I asked her if they did the texture and they drew that, or they they kind of did that themselves in Illustrator. So. That's incredibly impressive, the, the type of illustrative work these students are doing. I'm incredibly impressed. So looking at the typography, I do like the script. It's a very elegant script. It matches well with T. Uh, the black current, this pairs very well. You also have a sans serif, which is really nice because it's clean. So you're using three different typefaces, but I think they pair very well together. And this looks like it's probably the same typefaces up there, but just a different, just lowercase. So I think this is great. I mean, I really don't have anything necessarily negative to say. I think it's well presented. It's got a great layout, enjoying that background, this this, this really authentic, uh, rich texture. I think the only thing is the logo is when you zoom out, the, you lose the logo quite a bit, and the name brand is very important. So this white care, so or white acre, 
I would definitely make that bolder or simplify the, the kind of detail here in those excellent and beautiful. We need to find some way to bold that up so we can really have a more prominent name because that's the company name. And a lot of people look right for the company name to say, oh, I like that brand or I like that company before they buy a product. So that's just thinking about the product, not necessarily graphic design, but just trying to think of the branding aspect of that and the product shelves. You might even be able to make this a tiny bit bigger just to kind of really bring in the food aspect, the Blackberry aspect of this. But I really don't have a lot of critiques because I think it's lovely. Uh, it's a great, great uh, balance. You could probably even make this a tiny bit bigger, the beauty tea. Maybe, I mean, I'm not talking really big, just a little bit bigger right here, just because we need a little bit more hierarchy because these are, these are very similar sizes to this. So I'm just trying to make one element a tiny bit bigger than the other to have that sense of hierarchy, but really enjoying this. You guys are so talented with your illustration. I wish I was a better illustrator. That's something I'm always been a little weak on. I just wish, wish I was. I'm still learning. Okay, so this is the difference as the front and the back. Let's look at both products. Okay, so here we go. So I'm enjoying, first of all, let's see. I enjoy the colors. I like kind of the solid color. That looks really good. I also really love the cutout here of the photo, how you're putting the product in there. And I don't know if you had the idea of having that be clear plastic so they could see the product behind it. If so, amazing. I really love that clever idea of cropping out a certain shape to show the product. It's not just a boring square or a curly shape. It's, it's the sunflower itself. So the concept is super duper strong. I love that idea. It's really focusing on the product and what it looks like inside. That really helps entice people to make that decision um, to buy the product. I would say the valley is good. I'd maybe make valley just a tiny bit smaller so or bring this tag down just so you don't have anything uh, uh, problems with printing because it's a pretty tight space right here. So I would just have a little more breathing room at the top. You may have to make valley a little smaller because I would not make it bigger than it is now because it'll overwhelm the product name, which is sunflower seeds. And I would even make sunflower seeds maybe a hint thicker, the typeface or the weight, maybe a little bit bolder because I'm losing it a little bit and, um, and maybe uh, putting a little more padding around your white uh, area here, just a little more padding all the way around because it's really tight space between the lettering and the white. But really, really liking this. Let's see what the back looks like. So this is the back. So ingredients, sunflower, all that looks really good and nice. And I, I would even let's see how that see how this kind of extends up to this top. I'd even extend valley other to the to the right, make it like a little tag coming out. That would be neat. I think it'd look a little better than it floating in a box because you kind of already have it going off the side on the right. You could just kind of keep with that same theme on the left. Love this little sunflower coming off the corner. It really plays off the front. So the concept is so good. So I'm really enjoying this. I like the uh, two-tone here. Breaks up the big old white box. Just adding a hint of yellow. So well, well done. Yay. This is so fun. I love doing this. Okay, so next. So Bashkar. Hopefully I pronounced your name correctly. So this is for exotic berries. Is it free, um, for, uh, dry, freeze, dry, well, not, what am I trying to say? Dry, freezed, freeze, dry. I can't even say it. I don't know. You know what I'm trying to say. It's not fresh strawberries because you can't put that in the pa package. But um, I wonder if that's the product because if so, I can't tell exactly what type of product it is. I know it's berries, but I'm not quite sure what kind of berries they are. So um, I would maybe have a little bit more detail on the product. I would maybe, because this, this seems, does seem like a waste up here. Um, I, you know, maybe there could be a seal or something down here or put Hopkins here, which will leave you more room if you get rid of that and you put Hopkins up at that top bar. It'll give you more uh, of room to put your product. So if it's not fresh strawberries, you need to put a picture of your product somewhere. Is it strawberry chips? Is it strawberry marshmallows? You can have the strawberry and then you have a little bit more. If you get rid of that, you'll have some more room to put the product and have a little bit of a bigger strawberry here. Because we really need to be able to see what the product looked like because we know it's on the big package berries um, because that would 
rot in there. Um, but I like this exotic kind of going up. Um, it, you know, I, I wish the product name was, was there instead. But one thing I really do like, I like this kind of wave pattern. It, it looks a lot better than plain white. I really enjoy the pattern quite a bit. And I think your strawberry looks really good. I just need to have a product next to it. And this looks fine. Your typography looks really good too. And I actually like this bar that goes across the top too. That looks nice. So yeah, just kind of some first thoughts looking at it for the first time. Uh, kind of really wanting to see what the product looks like. And that's hard when you have to work with free photography. One of the hardest things when I was creating this cookie package, the hardest thing was trying to find free photography that would show my product because I wanted to do all sorts of unique products, but they I couldn't find a free photo that I was able to really isolate well from the background. So I ended up sticking with this and having to create my own kind of product shot. But, you know, it was hard. It's hard when you're, you don't want to have to buy photography to do a fun project either. So sometimes it's hard when you're trying to find product, unique product photos. All right, Cora. Okay, so let's take a look. Let's see which one we should look at first. Okay, there's a couple different ones here. So this is the, the rose velvet. This is, and I'm not able to really see what the product is. Uh, I can't see it. It might be a little too small. So if you're looking at a store shelf, and this is a lovely background, by the way. I think you did that in Dimensions, or I think there's a mock-up that has that, but it looks really good. Um, but I think what you might need to do is this needs to be a little bit bigger because I'm having a hard time understanding what the product is right away. Now, I know it's a drink. I know there's rose somehow involved in the drink, but I'm not quite sure what drink it is yet. And I need to be able to know that from this distance. So this little area description needs to be a little bit bigger. I do like the type and I would make the type just a tiny bit bigger. I do enjoy this background graphic. I think that looks really good. I think that's great. I think these little type areas, those are good as well. So I think there might be another version of this. Here's the back. I like the back a lot. Um, the only thing I might do is uh, this is pretty, pretty wide. So what I might do is shorten this a little bit because that's a long, you know, you don't want your eyes to have to go all the way over and then have to come back and go all the way over. It really kind of fatigues our eyes. So all you have to do is maybe shorten this to the paragraph, maybe about this size. And you don't want the text to kind of roll and curve over. You want to have a nice clear text. So what I would do is I would just kind of shorten everything to about this length, just so people don't have to read so far. But I like the composition. I like how this is in its own box. It separates the description. That looks really nice. And I'm really enjoying your typeface here. Okay, so we have a T, lovely T. I, I like this little playful thing you have going on with the two-tone. We have this kind of changing. I think that's very playful. It looks really good on the black and the gold. And I really like this kind of downward shape. It looks lovely. And look at this pattern. Look at this pattern. So you have this... Uh, shape here and look at the shape down here. So it's got this consistent kind of shape being created with this kind of downward arrow kind of shifting. And this is a wonderful pattern. I don't know if you did it yourself or not, but it looks fantastic. Very high end, very simple. Uh, I love everything about how the top is the same color as the bottom. And you have this gold really breaking it up. And I think it looks lovely. I think this would look good as a white top to have the same consistency. Beautiful. Well done. That pattern is something else. Oh, this is kind of a closer up. I can kind of read what the product is. Okay, great. So now I can kind of read that a little bit better. Um, so maybe it was just the resolution, but I would even bold that type a little bit, maybe italicize it, bold it, you know, some way to make it just a tiny bit bigger so they can really tell what the product is a couple feet away on the store shelf. Yeah, I know these do look professional. I was just, I'm just reading your comments every once in a while. And I was like, these are just top notch work for sure. So this is a wine bottle label. And I love the mock up and presentation and the velvet or the purple color. That looks really nice. So the only thing here is I am having a hard time making out the words and it's, it's very dark. So it definitely brighten this up. I know you're trying to go for the dark moody look. But I would definitely brighten up your type. You could probably get away with a lighter purple or a white type. 
You might even be able to borrow from the grapes. And I would definitely, you, you have to brighten this up quite a bit because I'm having a hard time really, and let me brighten my screen. That might help. I kind of had a dark screen there, so it helps when I brightened it. But still, I would just kind of maybe brighten kind of the middle of that, um, I guess, bow. I like the reserve here. That looks great. Uh, wine of origin, uh, Western Cape, South Africa. You might have a chance, there's kind of this gap here. You might have a chance to kind of bring that down just a little bit and have more breathing room in this line. I think that's great. So you might be able to find a different uh, photo of grapes and I kind of see your challenge because not many grape photos are taken on a black background. So you had to go in and try to try to darken that background and it might might have blurred the edges a little bit. So you know explore other grape photos. This grape photo looks like you know it's a little older. They don't look very fresh. So just maybe maybe finding another photo of the grapes might be helpful and definitely brightening up that type and I can see you put kind of this glow if you were to make it white I know that's not as fun if you were to make it white you wouldn't need the the glow that's a tough call because I do understand why you made it purple to match with everything but I like I kind of like this I'm a big fan of diagonal I don't want to put it on everything but you know I appreciate how it breaks up a design and I would even make the divine wine bigger for sure that could also help with readability you know divine wine so when instead of doing kind of a downward I would do divine wine like this divine wine so so it's a little bit easier to read that way because you're able to make it a lot bigger that way so that could kind of help break it up a little bit but I enjoy the purple I enjoy kind of the diagonal line there and I enjoy the mock-up Ooh, this one would be fun. This is a fun one. So this is what I wanted to show as a strong example of great type pairing and type hierarchy. So this is for CBD oil. This is a peppermint and there's a chocolate kind of flavor. And let me see if I can't get, here's the one without, not on the mock-up. And I wanted to kind of talk about all these different fonts going on, but how they all pair together so nicely. It doesn't seem overwhelming. She has these wonderful lines of division, which gives it that kind of old school look, almost like a 30s pharmacy look. It's got that kind of rustic, I'm trying to think of the right word for it, old school, but you know, it's got this wonderful kind of ode to the, you know, early 20th century, you know, drug manufacturing. A lot of this is kind of big with these dividing lines, very scientific, um, but kind of the cool, trendy, modern thing to do. But we have kind of this number, we have this one, we have this type, we have like a, um, a traditional type, we have a sans serif, we have kind of this different treatment, and we have, we have different treatments, and we have all caps and, and lowercase, and we have all these different things going on, but it works really, really well together. It looks fantastic. I would say the only um, maybe form of criticism I have is this, I love the type, but I'm afraid it's a little small compared to everything else because right now chocolate is the main part, but the CBD oil should be the main part. So what you could do, you can make chocolate just ever so slightly smaller or keep it the same size, or you can uh, get a more condensed typeface. And so it's going to be a little taller, but it's going to be able to take up more room of the piece and kind of be stronger. That would probably be the only criticism I have is a CBD oil. You do lose it a little bit, and that should be the number one biggest thing on there. But everything else I am in love with. I love this kind of curved shape, that cropping. I like that. I would just make sure your curves match perfectly, or maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm just being too picky because I think this looks great. So that's how it looks on the product. This is chocolate. Okay, this is peppermint. I like how you brought up the green. And it looks great. And ooh, didn't that look nice on the product? That looks so lovely. Look at that. I mean, that could be on a store shelf right now, as it is. I mean, that's that's incredible. Ooh, and chocolate. That looks good too. I'd love to try this. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Oh, we have oh, this is another Danielle. Okay, bring it on. Ooh, look how bright and vibrant these colors are. I remember making a comment about this on the Facebook group. Look at the pairing of this kind of cyan color and this pink color. It just really pops out. 
I mean, you talk about showing off on the store shelves. This is kind of how you have to do it. Go to the store and study products, and you'll be surprised how much contrast, high contrast, is being used in product design. And you may see it individually and go, wow, that's very bright and kind of like, whoa, you know, that maybe that's too bright. But when you see it on a product on the store shelves, it's all about being bright, colorful, showing off your package because you have a hundred other competitors that have a similar product than you. You have to stand out. So with product design, you can kind of step up your game in terms of having those bright, vivid colors. That's not a bad thing. Um, so normally if this was, you know, an ad, I'd be like, whoa, that's too much pink. But in this case, I think it could work. So frozen fruits, what I would love to see, and I love the illustration. This is really whimsical, very fun. I like the illustrations. I wish a package full of frozen fruits. I wish I could see what the frozen fruits look like. And I know that's hard to find those kind of free photos out there. Um, but maybe on the back, there's an opportunity to show off the product. Maybe you can show them individually like there's pomegranate and mango and all that kind of stuff. Uh, let's see. And I love this typeface right here. That's a nice typeface. Nice and bold. I like this a lot. Very whimsical. Very fun. I really have, I don't have a whole lot of criticism. Um, oh, you got the farm to table logo there. That's the logo we created the, uh, the package design section. So that's fun that I see my little logo there. So it's part of my product line <laughs> and it's gluten free. All right. So yeah, really enjoying that. And here's how it looks on just plain. And when you see it plain, you go, well, it's a lot of pink. I don't know if it works. And then you see it on the product and you go, yes, it, it, it can work. Um, I might even just remove this little, this is fun though. I hate how it goes over the F's though, but maybe it's just me being picky. Just maybe having the circle do this instead, just like right here so it doesn't interfere with the readability of the F's. Okay, just kind of glancing at your comments. Okay, all righty, Eden, let's see how many more we have. Wow, guys, we have a lot to do and it's already a half hour past, so I gotta, I gotta speed this up a little bit. Whoa, look at this. I remember seeing this. Oh my, let's just take a moment to appreciate this. So they do a lot of collage work and they wanted to bring that in on their product design. And they are just, and I asked them where they got their Renaissance photos because I'd love to get into this a little bit too. Um, getting that free, those free photos to use. So if you are listening, if you wanted to post there or in the Facebook group where you found these Renaissance photos, I know there's several places like Flickr where you can find free open source historical photos to use for these kind of compositions. I think it makes for beautiful work because you're able to kind of bring these old maps out. You're able to kind of do these little geometric textures. This, this is absolutely stunning. This is artwork. And I love the kind of the, the head kind of coming out here. You have the arm wrapping around. You have all these things happening and it's readable and it's enjoyable and it's unique. And I would say the only thing I would do, what would really make this pop, I am losing the yellow just a little bit, just a little bit. So there's, you know, a couple things you could do. You could do like a little inlay where you have like a little kind of colors here, just like, or you can use uh, on the label, print it in gold foil or have a special gloss on it to make the, the lettering pop out. So do like a high gloss finish on the Libra to make the type show off on the product. That's my only concern is the Libra. I do lose it a little bit. But in terms of the artwork and the background and the photo composition, it is an incredibly stunning piece of art. So well, well done. Let's take a look on how it looks as a product on the product. Look at that, it's beautiful. And once again, it is busy. It's busy. So when you see this against a clean geometric kind of wine bottle, you know, it, it's busy, but I don't mind it being busy. It's part of a unique quality that I think is good. But I think if we made the Libra stand out a little bit more, I think that would solve kind of the issue I have with it and everything else is fine. So there is a busy element to it where if you look I'm just trying to be practical from a product sales perspective. If you see it from a distance, it is hard to take it all in. Um, but I, I love it so much. <laughs> it's hard to, hard to knock it, you know, and I love how it looks on this product as well. So I'm just trying to be the devil's advocate and trying to think um, about how it looks on the store shelves and how effective it is. 
Um, and I think using maybe some kind of shine effect on this will really help it come to life on the, on the product shelf. But this is an incredibly impressive piece of art. So very, very, very impressed. And this is a wide angle shot or a wide shot of this. And I even like how this looks. The quality right here, that little label right here, kind of like that little uh, detail. So yes, very cool. So I just want to take a moment to really spend time looking at that. All right, Grace. So we have Gracie's. Let's look at a wider shot of this. So this is, oh, I guess this is going to be a better shot. So I like the cup here. I like the texture of the cup. I like the brown. I like the, the top pattern there. Um, I think Gracie's, the typeface is okay. Um, I would explore different types of scripts. Maybe one, you know, what's kind of popular now is scripts that don't uh, stay on the same X or uh, bottom kind of baseline there. They kind of go up and down. They kind of have the script, fun, handwritten type face that could look a little modern and trendy there. So just some ideas. I don't think it's bad, uh, but maybe exploring different typefaces there. This needs to be a little bit bolder. And I think your product image is fine there. I think this is overall a really good, strong piece, but I would just kind of maybe explore typefaces there, uh, make that a little bit bolder. I like this top and bottom piece. I think it looks good. And I am having to move a little faster. Okay, so ooh, cupcake. Ooh, this makes me hungry and it's almost lunchtime for me. So I have another hour till lunch. So this looks really, really good. So they found this mock-up somewhere. And if you are here or watching, if you want to post where you found that mock-up, because I think people would love to have this um, to be able to kind of create their own. But I think this illustrative pattern, I don't know if he illustrated it or not, but if he did, it's incredible. I like the this how this is clean. So notice how this is a white background, very clean, and this is detailed. And that's exactly what you have to do when you're creating an eye-catching package design is you have this clean side contrasted with a little bit more of an illustrative, busier side. So instead of making the whole thing this black texture and trying to fit the logo on top, they made this nice clean area to put that on. I think that works beautifully. The, the pattern is wonderful. I think the pattern on here looks really good. There's that two-tone contrast. So you notice successful package designs do that. They have two tones. They have a lighter and then a darker. They have a blue and then they have a da-da-da. They have the breaking up of the background. So I think this is absolutely stunning. This is really good. Let me go ahead and move in, kind of see some of that illustrative work and the logo. I would just maybe push that up just a tad, just, just so you don't have any printing problems there. Just making sure it's all in safety. I'm being very picky though. But I think I like the inside, how you have the confetti too. It's kind of a nice little touch. So wonderfully done, Hannah. Okay, we have some here, zing. Let's take a look at the mock-up first. So what I would do, one of the first things I notice here is we have a red product and we have a red label. And so what I would do is put a little white here or a little bit of contrast against the red. Whatever will help the label stand out against red. And, you know, that doesn't mean you use blue or anything crazy like that, but maybe more white. So this could be, the top part could be white and the bottom could be a color too. So I think that would help clean it up a little bit, have more of a simple background because you have red here, then yellow, then you have red, then you have yellow. So it's kind of, there's a lot going on with the background which can make it seem a little busy. So finding ways to simplify and maybe even making the zing white, or if this was white, you can make the zing the color of the product. So there's a lot of options that you have there. I like the idea of it splitting diagonally and having a mango and having a kind of combining the fruit. I think that's a really good concept that you can continue to explore and maybe make it bigger. So maybe kind of make it just a little bigger. I know it's a very tight label, so you might not have a choice. Let's see what it looks like as just the label. So yeah, I can see it a lot better here. Um, I would probably eliminate that item and uh, explore maybe some different typefaces here. Uh, maybe kind of something more simple because you already have this very detailed typeface here. So maybe a sans serif for strawberry and mango. That'll help simplify it a little more. So there we go. I like the idea of splitting it in half, though. That's a really good concept. So Haley, you have an updated version. So this is the updated. 
and this is the prior version. So I think you remove this little type here and you ship. Oh wait, that's the same. Oh, you brought it down. Good. That's exactly what I would have done. I would have told you to bring that down and you certainly did already. So that's great. So what I would do is just move this 180 grams. Just move that right up here because we I don't think we're allowed to have anything on here that's going to be typed. So that's just a technical error or a technical thing you can quickly fix. I like the kind of hand-drawn look of this. Once again, two-tone. We have one and we have two and we even have three. Tritone, I guess you could call it. Uh, three different kind of backgrounds that are kind of creating a nice divided design. I like the idea of the little tree. We have the tree on the cover, tree on the chocolate, tree on the background. The only thing I would change, I think this is a lovely blue. I think all this looks really, really good. I like this little product here, this little label that can come down. That all looks really strong. I mean, the only critique I would have is just your mock-up background. It's maybe uh, lightening up the pink a little bit, just and maybe maybe it's just screening back the trees so they're more subtle, so it doesn't fight with your beautiful product. You want this to be the star of your mock-up. You don't want your background to be the star. So maybe kind of lightening up that a little bit or screening it back and, and making this the star of the show. But I don't have anything particular to do because you, you kind of corrected some of those issues I would have had. I would just move the 180 grams up and you have a really strong clean. It's really nice and clean. I enjoy that. So wonderfully done. Okay, we have a lot on this one. I think we have multiple ones. So I'm not going to be able to do spend quite as much time on each one of these. They created this themselves by studying a previous package. And I like this. I like how this, okay, so we have a blue here. And I like how it gets lighter. So it's a little bit of a gradient. But it, there's some highlights and shadows to this blue. And it makes it look more rich. It's not just a solid color. And I love this little logo here. Hopefully you have another picture where I get to see that a little better. Uh, but I like the back and the side. And, and I love how the top is white. And the bottom is, so you're noticing a theme here with everything. And the gold and the blue go really well together. And this looks really great. I think you have multiple things going on here. Okay, so this is it on the mock-up. So there, there's the label and kind of thinking about the colors and the patterns. And this is great to show people how die cuts and the templates work and how a box like that actually folds out. Uh, it's kind of complicated, but when you, someone supplies you a template, it's really not too bad. You just have to remember when to reverse things and what side's what. So once you kind of get a handle on that, and, and if you have a package that folds down, so this is the flap, you got to make sure to turn things upside down. And just kind of kind of in your mind, you have to kind of box it up and figure out, oh, do I need to flip that around, upside down for the template? Because sometimes you have to do that. So that's a great kind of study in, in this. And they did a lot of work to create this. Okay, so here is the sample box that they unwrapped. And they were able to measure everything. So they took the time to take a real box and create the template, which was uh, very impressive. Let me make sure that was it. Okay, so here's, I think, the redesign. So mood boards and reference imagery are collected from the internet. So this is kind of her idea process and, and gathering ideas. And this is a chocolate bar. Okay, here's the, okay, here it is. Here's the twinnings. That looks really good. Kind of really a great study into how templates work and the complexity on how everything folds. I think that's really, really neat. I'd love it if you could supply that that template to students. If I don't know if, if you want to or not, but that would be really helpful for all of us to kind of have something like this to kind of understand how to, how to do the package design process. Okay, so here's a chocolate bar. Ooh, look at this. Look how rich this is. Beautifully done. Very elegant. Very high end. It looks very expensive. So I like, so 80 degree or 80 degrees, 80%. 80 I see it right away. That's important. Beautiful logo. Did you do that logo yourself? It's stunning. I love this little feathering effect of the logo. The tight face is high end, elegant, great type hierarchy. This might need to come out a little more because it's kind of important with the lactose gluten free. That could be something that a lot of people who are gluten free look for. So just making sure that comes out a little bit more. 
but this is a beautiful high-end chocolate bar wonderfully done I like kind of this two-tone once again you're seeing that theme over and over Ooh, and this is a brown one that looks good as well look at that Ooh, I want some chocolate I kind of like the pictures on the front too and they're not too strong either and I love how you're choosing not everything's white not everything's gold you have gold then you have a white and then you have a gold you're not overusing a particular color and that's really lovely okay we have this one I think this is the latest one you did so with this we might need to have some more information because right now we have chipsy but is it gluten-free you know what's the product weight you know all those little technical things we need to think about when we're putting on a product because right now chipsy okay it's potato chips but but sell it to me now you got to sell me the product you know this would be a great place to put a badge and say organic or you know what is the unique selling point of chipsy is it just potato chips are they plain do they have a spice to them you know tell me more about your product and kind of what it does I do like your product photo so I do like that I like how this is kind of diagonal and not straight across I think that kind of adds something dynamic but I definitely add more to this to make it as realistic as possible because when we do package design we have to we have to work in lots of stuff um, some stuff we don't always like to work in but it's part of the job it's part of being as realistic as possible when doing a package design so I just kind of go into more detail about your product what kind of chip is it you know what flavor is it you know I don't know anything about your product but in terms of composition you know I think you have a good balance between photo and your main headline I would just work on details and taking it the next level Wow, we have a lot of designs here. Ooh, look at this one. Chili sauce. So I like this pattern. And notice this, how this breaks up, two-tone. So as you're going to see that on all successful package designs, you're probably going to see something like that. You're not going to see all the same color. I love the illustration. They did the illustration themselves. So if you look here, they drew that in Adobe Illustrator. I kind of like the rough look of it. It feels, you know, more organic and like someone drew it and not not a professional artist who did it like picture perfect it's kind of got that authentic feeling to it I like that I like these little patterns here too and how they look hand-drawn I think that looks lovely uh, made by hand so you're kind of going the whole handmade hand-drawn route so in terms of keeping with consistency there it looks really good uh, I like your chili sauce I like that I like this is kind of the type face I are the script type I was wanting to talk about earlier where it doesn't follow on the baseline see how the baseline it gets broken that's kind of more of your modern script kind of breaks the mold a little bit kind of is not straight and I love the curve of the sauce and I like how, how the little accent on the sides so wonderfully done let me go ahead and take a look at the mock-up real quick so I think that looks good I might even make go fresh just a tiny bit bigger tiny bit bigger and then made by hand just a tiny bit bigger it's right there but I think overall I like I like it and maybe chili sauce just a tiny bit bigger you got a lot of space to work with you don't want to have everything be too tight though so not too much bigger but um, that's pretty much the only thing I would change I enjoy the tight face I enjoy the composition and the hand-drawn look okay moving on Kimberly Ooh, organic soybean spaghetti okay so the first thing that I notice is the cutout here for the product um, you could see the product inside I think that's lovely look at that it's got this really curvy movement and, and, it, and it comes around the back so you have this beautiful product shot you actually see the product you don't have to put a product photo on there because it's already there you get to see what it looks like and you get to see what it looks like made so I really like that and uh, just this is just lovely let me zoom in I love the details here so you have this great background this little subtle texture and it doesn't overwhelm it's kind of screened back a little bit and you have this little nice subtle texture down here everything just feels very loose and fun and it just has this really nice feel to it and it has this very consistent theme with shapes all throughout and you have this wonderful um, header or name of your product kind of zooming around and you're kind of and it 
that's echoed throughout your package design. So you have a wonderful branding here. This is probably the strongest example of branding that I've seen so far with being consistent with shapes and colors. So you zoom out. What I might even do is since you have a lot going on, I might not have the accent here in your color. I just might make that a solid color just to simplify because you do have a lot of beautiful things going on. I wouldn't complicate it further. And I would just make sure you have just a tiny bit more space there, but that could just be the way it fits on the mock-up. But let's take a look at the back. Great. I like this a lot. I would even make um, tighten the spacing between your lowercase lettering just a tad um, and, and maybe make it one point smaller. Uh, but that's it. Just to balance it with the, the right side. Look at the curves there of the product. See the product inside? I would totally see this on a store shelf right now and buy it. Although I'm allergic to soybeans but I would still buy it anyway because it's great packaging. <laughs> this is great. So this is what she redid. So this is the one that is on the store shelves now, and this is the one she did. So which one do you like better? Obviously this one. It looks modern. This one looks dated and old and boring, and this looks fresh and exciting, so wonderful job. I think they have a few other shots, so that's just without the mock-up. You get to see the textures a little bit better. All right, Luke. Let's see what Luke did. Ah, Bambinos. And once again, you have this neat cutout to show the product. You don't have to do a boring across the way cutout. You can do these really cool creative shapes depending on the shape of the the, uh, the the thing. So we have bow tie pasta and it has a bow tie shape. We have the traditional macaroni and then we have the fusilli. I don't even know how to say that. And then the pinne. I do, I do know pinne. Um, I don't want to butcher that. But I love the idea that you're taking the product shape and you're bringing that out in the product design package. Brilliant. Wonderful. Uh, that is a very brilliant way. And notice the theme, our two-tone. We have a dark side and a light side, and it breaks up the product. Wonderful, high-impact name. I'd even make it just like 10% bigger. But I like how this is on the bottom, too. And uh, it, it just looks really good as a whole set. So the whole brand looks really, really good together. Let's take a look at the individuals. That's what the individuals look like. There's the, that is such a brilliant idea to cut out the pasta, the same shape. And the back looks really clean. What I would do here, instead of having the space, I would just put, the, I would just have your type start here. So you don't have this kind of awkward gap there. Or put this in a circle or something. So, so it doesn't look like it's, you know, accidentally indented. Uh, but that's really it. I love the macaroni part. There's the back. And then there, oh, there's the back on all of them. So I, I can tell you used Adobe InDesign. Hopefully you've enjoyed using Adobe, um, not InDesign, Dimensions. You've enjoyed using Adobe Dimensions to create a lot of these packages. Okay, White Pleasure. So this one's a new one. I haven't had time to really kind of digest this one yet. But on the mock-up, so I, I like your product image. I get an idea of what it is even though I can't kind of read the, the, I guess that's Russian. I can't really read the, 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 the language, but I understand what it is by looking at the product. So I think that's good. I don't think you need all of these shots. I think this is enough. So I would get rid of this and maybe have a leaf here, but I think you have enough of the nuts and everything here where you don't need to have multiple pictures overlapping. And I like the diagonal. I would even get rid of this line to clean it up because you already have a diagonal line here. And I think that looks pretty good. So you even have the product right here. And this might even be a real product you sell if I can remember what you said correctly that you actually had a product like this because that looks like a real shot from a product that you sell. But I like this quite a bit. I like the product shot a lot. And this is it. It's a little low resolution, but that could have just been because it was Facebook. But I like how that looks overall. But yeah, simplify that. I would just keep keep to one or two um, images. Okay, we already did him. Okay, Raza, I think we're almost there. We've still got a long way to go. 
Okay, so hemp seed oil. Look at this. So let's see what it looks like on the package so we can get an idea. Oh, they got two different products. We're not going to be able to do too many here. But here's what this looks like on the mock-up. I like how that looks. So now we can kind of look at the individual package and see how this looks. So what I like about this is I like how the product is right here cut out on the bottom. I think that looks really good. Uh, cold press, I like how this is in a box. That looks good. Let me make this smaller. There we go. I like how that's in a box. I like kind of how everything is aligned. That looks really, really good. This badge looks nice. I like the ripple kind of effects on the edges and the leaves coming out. It looks really authentic, really good. I like the screen back nature of how it looks on black. This little screen back picture. I like how it looks on green, but it might need to be a little less um, contrast on the white because it's overtaking the badge. So just kind of screening that back. You already have kind of the leaves down here too. And here is egg pasta. So that's kind of how that one looks. I would say I like the cutout, how it looks like the egg pasta. I'm wondering what kind of these these shapes are kind of going around. If it's just kind of a fun look or if there's a reason why you have kind of the shape, unless that's what the shape of the egg pasta looks like. You know, just kind of wondering because you kind of have this kind of pattern coming down, but you also have this these lines intersecting it too, and it does start to get a little bit busy. So just wondering that gold line right there. There's some way we can simplify that or remove the texture here so there's not both. Ooh, and here's what it looks like. Wow, it's a lot of type, but some products need a lot of type. Um, but yeah, I would definitely kind of question what that is, but you might have a really good explanation. It might be the shape of the pasta. But I like how this, this pattern looks consistent throughout and how you do your typography. You're having to work with a lot of type, but I think you've divided it up really well in the, in the nutrition area. I think it's missing a picture somewhere back here, but if you have to put all that type, then you have to. You can't get around it. But I'd love to break this up somehow because uh, this side looks like this side looks like this side. If there's a way we could break it up either with color, contrast, or a picture of some sort. Awesome. Okay, so Rita. So this is her berry cookies. I love how these everything looks on the mock-up. We have another farm to table brand. All right. I'm expanding my branding of my food package empire. Um, but that's funny. That's great how you use the logo. But I like this a lot. It looks kind of similar to the cookie package I did. I like kind of the front and center product. And you have these berries perfectly around here. What I really like about this is this gradient change. So you have this white and then it goes to this kind of intermediate color and it goes to this really deep color and it goes all the way to black. And the transition here looks very smooth. Um, you can, you know, it's not like a gradient where you just see a single color transition to another color. It's got a nice smooth, rich kind of look to it, how it transitions. I think that looks really nice. I think your product is nice and big. I think the only issue I had was with the seal. Um, maybe either making it bigger or bringing out, instead of having black, bring out some of this rich purple in the middle. That might have a little bit better contrast. And you don't want the black here to compete with the cookie color. You don't want that to fight. So embrace the purple from down here. That'll tie in this to here, to this purple color. That would look really good. And this is how it looks on another kind of presentation. Ooh, I like how this looks a lot. I've seen this mock-up a couple times. I think it looks good. Oh, and I love the little texture on the side. That's really neat right here. Well done, Rita. Everybody's doing so good. Okay, so this is a lot here. So maybe we can get through this quickly because there's just one person doing this one. Okay, whoa. Okay, so they have a Behance project if you really want to go on there. And this is his name. Look him up on Behance. He has a whole project that goes into all the detail over it. Because I think this is great. Let's find the one where it's all together. Which it's not going to make this easy, is it? Okay, so we're just going to look at it single. And then we'll get to look at it all together as one. So I like how they put the little pineapple in there. And how they emulated that. What I really like about this is the two-tone look. 
So once again, you're seeing that same theme on almost all the successful package designs. We have this wonderful arrow kind of effect, and then it's echoed with this lighter stroke. And I think that adds a nice texture that would otherwise be boring if it was just a plain solid color. And I like the, uh, I like the type. It's lowercase, and there's some wide spacing here. I mean, it might just be me, but maybe tighten the spacing just a little bit. Kind of lowercase letterings ha letters have a hard time uh, kind of standing together as a word when there's spacing between them. Uppercase usually doesn't have a problem, but there's something about lowercase lettering where wider spacing can sometimes look a little disjointed. But loving the colors, loving the pattern, loving the background, this is looking really good. Of course, there's other flavors. This is kind of an inspiration board and type and everything is kind of coming together as a brand, great brand assets here. Colors, color inspiration, color palette. Uh, some fonts are using Acumen Pro, which is a, a versatile font typeface. Patterns, loving the pattern. I enjoy the fruit kind of pattern as well. Very versatile. We have cherry, which looks good. And we have watermelon. I like, some, the cherry didn't pop out as much as the yellow and then the watermelon. So I don't know why, but maybe that's just how red is sometimes. And let's see them all together. I think hopefully we have the all together shot. This is without it being on a mock-up. And you can kind of see all the, I like how this is treated. That looks very professional. This could be a real product on a shelf right now as it is. It could be a real product. This is my favorite shot because you get to kind of see them all together. And if you want the most up-to-date stuff, follow him on Behance. He has a, uh, a, he outlines all this there, and I think it's really good, really extensive. I appreciate the branding that he went through, the branding process to show this. He really went the extra mile to, to do that. And once again, the yellow pops, the green pops, and there's something about the red. And it might be the texture it's not coming out as vibrant as the green and yellow. So maybe that's just what it is. But the composition and the two-tone of the black and the bright, beautiful, beautiful work. Okay, we're almost there. Ooh, I like this. Okay, so we have this nice uh, bringing over of the product, splashing over to a side which looks really nice. You're not just feeling like you're stuck on one panel. You're bringing things into other panels. I haven't seen that as much, but I like it here. Uh, I like this done. I think there's an opportunity here. Not sure what that could be, but there could be an opportunity on this panel to do something else with the, uh, maybe have a glass here that kind of comes over, the little straw, you know, just some kind of opportunity to show off the product in a glass since it is a liquid just to kind of take advantage of that opportunity. And let's take a look at, uh, oh, I like this uh, logo. If they made that up, it's really well done with the straw and the, and the, and the leaf. And that looks great. I mean, this stuff can really be on a store shelf. It's amazing how convinced, oh, yay, that looks wonderful. Yeah, definitely do something with the side because you have this big gap here. Big opportunity here. You don't have to fill every space up, but I think there's an opportunity to do something there. Uh, maybe this splashes over and you could see a glass or something with a little straw and play off the straw of the uh, logo. You know, who knows? But I think there's definitely an opportunity there because I love white space, uh, but, but with products, it's also nice to show off the product as much as you can. So pro with package designs, it is a little bit different. You know, you can be a little bit more elaborate with, with filling in those white spaces. Okay. Sophia. Let's see what this one, oh yeah, this one's going to be good. Let's see if I can get back on one. Uh, Sophia Moon. Okay, so this, I'm going to have to give you a little background on this. So this is a, a made up food company that's supposed to take the complexities out of choosing your ingredients and eating. And they send you pre-made meals, but they don't tell you exactly all the ingredients, but they just tell you the nutrition of it. So you're getting this amount of fat, this amount of calories, but they're not telling you um, this is in it, this is in it, this is in it. And at the end of the time, then they reveal what the ingredients were 
to say, well, what, which one, what product did you enjoy? And you get to reveal all these new things you wouldn't normally try. So there's really this great experimental branding project and idea that I'm sure there's an investor out there that would love to make this a real reality. And your package design is brilliant. It goes with the simplicity, you know, how it's so complicated of a time trying to pick out a meal at the grocery store and you're looking at the ingredients and I'm just, you're just overwhelmed and, and you just want it to be simple. Just give me a meal that is, has great nutrition for my body. And this has this very simple, clean package design that goes along with the whole idea of the brand. And that's so important. This is probably, the, this is very, 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 very strong. And so I love the idea of this kind of the idea of here's your kind of your square or circle meal, kind of your square meal of the day. It's got everything you need. It's got 50, 30, 20, I guess it's fat, protein, you know, all that kind of stuff in there. And I love this extra white space. And I know with package design, I've been saying, put your product on there, put an image of it. But I think in this case with your brand and just trying to simplify the process of eating and making it uh, less tedious, I think not showing your product on the front is a good idea because you're not about showing off the ingredients. You're about talking about uh, the nutritional side of eating. And I think it's really good. So let's see what else we have here. Ooh, nice branding. I love the consistency with kind of this, this, oh, the spacing here between the dots and how they gradually get red and they talk about the, oh, just, uh, I love it. I love it. And this is how kind of the, the product comes in this kind of package. So you have ingredients, nutrition. I guess you wouldn't quite have the ingredients, but you'd have kind of the breakdown of, you know, what's the composition of it. And um, there's another shot where you get to see the front, you get to see the beautiful illustrative line art, which I really appreciate. So this is the front, so loves to feed you and wonderful type here. This is just brilliant and consistent and just the spacing. Ah, oh, it's like a beautiful piece of contemporary art, but it's a package design. That's what's so wonderful. It's not hard to look at. It's very easy and soft to look at. And this is what kind of some more, I love this beautiful line art. So this is be like a Sunday lunch. So you can have comments and rate your meal. So you could, they even can use that consistent look of that to do the rating, which is a very clever way to be consistent. And the beautiful line art here is wonderful, the overlapping lines. So all they did is did strokes, probably an illustrator and illustrated it and just left it on strokes. It has this really nice uh, feeling. And look at this white space. It's like the perfect amount of white space everywhere. And I like kind of how they have a sand serif and a serif together. It, it looks really nice together. And same thing over here, the wine glass. And this is kind of how the menu looks overall. Kind of get to see the, the cup of tea and the and how everything is is different. It just look, it just really matches with the target audience. And it, you know, these are probably expensive, but it's probably for a professional who want doesn't want to be overwhelmed by nutrition and wants to eat the right things and wants to eat healthy things. But they're busy, but they have some disposable income. And I think this really caters to the professional working person, you know, or the person who has that disposable income. It's got a high and expensive feel to it. And I think that's important to. Um, kind of match what they're spending with what they're getting in terms of level of design. And so this is, this is going to be hard to beat. This is going to be hard to beat. This is absolutely blows me away. So hopefully I've shown everything in its glory. Let's just take a quick look as I close these windows at everything they did. Look at that. Simple. Effective. Brilliant. Okay, so I'm glad I took the time to, to spend on that. So we have another one here, pineapple cake mix. Oh, we haven't had a box. We haven't done a lot of boxes. We've done lots of bags. I like this. I think the, um, the type, though, and the photo may not have enough contrast. So we have this really bright photo and kind of a bright white type. So you lose, you lose a little bit of this. I mean, I can read it, but I think if you darken it and add some rich tones to that picture, maybe bring out some of the shadows, I think it would help with the readability and the contrast there. Um, same, here, same thing here with the yellow. The yellow and the white are low contrast, and we want to have high contrast when it comes to products on a shelf. 
although I love the way that looks like for editorial and, and that kind of design. But when it comes to package design, we've got to be a little more high contrast. So I don't know if you could try bring out the red or bring out maybe this brown color. I'm not tr quite sure what color I would use or darken the yellow, although I really like this light yellow. It goes really well with the pineapple. So I'm not quite sure the exact recommendation of there. But I think as long as you just high, uh, add more contrast between your elements. I love the little pineapple here. I love the type. I love the size of everything. All that's really, really strong and good. So I think it's just a matter of making sure there's enough contrast between the photo and the type so that they don't blend in too much with each other. Because when it comes to package design, you got to pop out immediately and, and, and don't be subtle, you know, with, with package design. Okay, Cocoa Bites. Ooh, now that is probably the best pr uh, product photo I've seen. It's the most enticing. It's got the zoomed in tight shot. You see the little details of the coconut flakes? That, it, I just want to grab one and eat one. So in terms of being enticing, you got me there. Fantastic photo usage there. I love how you use a stroke here. I'm usually not a big fan of strokes, but I, a thick stroke, it's nice. It, it, it really helps stand out above the photo. And you're able to make the photo bigger, and you're still able to put the type on top and have it be readable. So well done. I like this little new. Uh, if I were just to just do a small thing, I would just maybe make new go that way instead of against the, I'd have it go toward the product instead of away from the product. So right now it's going away, and that will go toward. Very, very small little change I would do. I like the idea of the contrasting O's and the A's. Uh, and you're bringing out the O and the A of the, well, I'm not quite sure why A is highlighted, but it'd be neat if you did the C's and the O's because it's cocoa. So you could, well, then it wouldn't be quite as interchanging. So never mind. Or you could do cocoa all in one color and nut in another one since cocoa is the brand. I don't know. I think you got it right. Don't worry about what I said. Um, I like this, but I would screen it back just a tiny bit, this little texture here, because you already you have such a high-impact photo, that's the focal point. You want that to be the focal point. Vegan-friendly, a source of protein and fiber. I like all this. Let's make sure that's center aligned. It probably is, but just the way it looks on the mock-up. I think this is great. I would make that just a little bigger so we can really see that coconut and cocoa, cacao kind of word. But... Oh, that photo. I want, I want to eat this. I want to eat these things. You need to make these real. All right, so dog food brand. So dogs, powerful food. So uh, the gray, the green work beautifully together. I think this little extra off looks great. Good size. This is overall a really strong package design. Um, I would just put a little more space. I know you're trying to do the layered look. But I think with how clean it is, I would maybe put more spacing between the dog and the L. And I would maybe, it feels heavy on the right, like right here. So I might even put dog here. Dog would fit really good here. And shift that over, and then you don't have the lettering so close to the dog. And because this is such a clean look, you want to try to stay as clean and wide, open space as you can. But I really like this quite a bit. Um, I like the green top two-tone contrast right there and kind of have you have, you have a white bottom here and then you have kind of a dark color there so there's contrast happening and it looks really good I like your little paw icon as well okay rise so once again two-tone contrast what I would do just in terms of presentation is I would maybe put this on a solid color or reverse it out. So put this green here. That's just for presentation though. Um, so in terms of, I'm trying to think what, okay, so the simplest protein bar, I'm trying to think, see what that is. It's a little low res. So I'm having a hard time knowing what that picture is of. It looks like a glass, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. So I'd definitely make that photo bigger. You got a lot of room to make it bigger and I'm not quite a hundred percent sure. It's a protein bar. So it might be protein pouring out into a spoon, definitely make it bigger because right now it's so small, I'm not able to really make it out. And if I can't, you should just remove it. So either remove it or make it big, make it have it be the divider between the two sections. Um, I like this rise, the simple protein bar. Um, this could even maybe go all the way across the product. So you don't have to, you know, you can have this high contrast there. 
Um, I like this. I like the two-tone look, but definitely make sure that provides a purpose. You know, make it bigger, make it enticing, make it a picture of the product. Okay, I think we only have two more left, so hang in there. Ooh, saving the best for last. So look at that. So I think they hand drew that chocolate all the way across. And look at this together as a set. So I'm just looking at looking at this as a set and they go so well together and most of the time products are put together on the shelf so these could all be aligned the same way or in the same section of the store and so you want all the colors to go together well and what I like about these is it's not super bright colors but yet they're different enough and they're rich enough to be impactful because you, know, you don't have to use super bright colors with every package design you can have ones that are a little more dull but still add a lot of value so here's how one looks. I can, you know, kind of see where they added the shadows there, the chocolate dripping down. I like that aspect. I've not seen a product that has done that on a store shelf, personally. So I think that's something really unique. Um, the only thing, I like the strawberries coming down. The strawberries behind the O, though, maybe, maybe you don't need those, just to simplify, because you already have floating strawberries as a pattern, and you have strawberries here. I might, I don't think you need those. Um, behind behind the O. I think it's cute though. I really do. I like your typeface choices here. This this is a good size. So everything's really nice. Let's take a look at the other ones. I love the packages all together. See that looks good. I like kind of the I like it here though. So maybe it's just the strawberry stems kind of being hidden behind it, but I like it here. That looks good. And then we have, ooh, the mint. Yeah, see, I don't like it with the mint or the strawberry, but the orange, it just happens to be a circle, so it fits really good in the circle, but the other ones aren't circles, so they're not fitting quite as well. But the chalk, the colors here are beautiful. You kind of, instead of using, you kind of use more of a mint color here, which is not super bright green. It's more of kind of a bluish green. I like the way that looks. Let's see. So there's uh, hazelnut. The hazelnuts look good in there. Let's take a look at one more. Okay, we already did that one. Let's just take a look at this for like a minute or two because the way they presented this is really brilliant as well. So I like this one a lot. I love the chocolate coming down, dripping down. It really makes my mouth water. It makes me want to pick up the product and touch it, turn it over, see what's inside. I want to buy this. I love chocolate, by the way. Okay, two more left. So this is supposed to be ramen noodle top. So kind of thinking about, I like how the it's divided and you have a nice enticing product image here. Um, you have kind of a fun typeface. Um, I would just tighten the spacing just a tiny bit there and I would maybe even um, either bring this in or bring that out and put kind of some equal spacing between these little leaf elements and your typeface. And I would also commit to a center alignment. So right now, this is committed to a center alignment. That's great. But then you have this, which is for some reason over just a little bit. So I would shift the original over so that everything commits to a center alignment. And another thing I might do when you have kind of this diagonal look and you have a circle, sometimes I like to put the circle kind of over here, make it a little bit bigger. It kind of brings the right and the left sides together by putting a unifying circle between there. But I like the illustrations. The colors are great. It's a great high impact photo. Last but not least. Ooh, now I want an icicle. Okay, so tropical crush. So I like this a lot. So we have this kind of dripping nature, which, you know, icicles melt. So it's kind of a play against that. I love this so much. I think there's almost too much background and not enough product. So I like this so much, I would try to make it, I know it's very tall, um, but I would try to make this a little bigger impact, high impact photo. Um, because right now you have a lot of this little pretty background, but, but I wanna see that product a lot. So I'm trying to think of the best way to do that. You could even have another one coming out here, another one coming out here, or you could make it shorter, maybe not see the stem and just be able to really bring that in tighter like that. But I'm loving the colors, the kind of blue and the yellow go well together. I kind of like this diagonal look here. Uh, this is nice. I can see it. Nice size. This is a good contrast color. 
kind of look how it looks over here. It's a great box design. But yeah, I just feel like the product is a little weak. I love it, but I just want to see, I want to zoom in on it and kind of get a tighter shot of that. Okay, ooh, this is simple. Okay, so look at this little drop. I love this. Okay, so I love everything, sorry. Um, so you have this little drop of the actual product on top, like the seal, and then you have it kind of this negative space. I haven't seen as much negative space being used in labels, and I like the use of that. That is just so subtle and so good. And then you have some great typography here. You have this kind of interesting uh, breaking up of your type. This is definitely your strongest one. You have a lot of potential here. Um, and I love the rounded corners here. And then it just has this rounded dip into the, and you have this up here. Ah, oh, so good. And here's kind of it, everything detailed. So you definitely, oh, you hand drew that too. Oh, even better. So he has this hand-drawn typography that he was able to digitize and then place on there. So yeah, I agree here. Just making that a little bit bigger. That whole product shot is beautiful. Tighten that up. You would also be able to make your beautiful typography shine if you made that bigger too. And you get to show the box. So this is how a box looks. And sometimes, you know, there's a lot of elements to it. You have lots of flaps that fold. And sometimes things are have to be upside down because when it folds, it turns right side up. So it's a little complicated doing a box, but this kind of, if you study these enough, you kind of, when you do your own box design someday for a real company, you'll be able to kind of understand how it folds. Is that everybody? That's everybody. So, oh, these are brilliant. And it's going to be so challenging trying to find the best in show. So I'm going to need some help here. If you want to say, who do you think deserves the best in show prize? It's not really a prize, but kind of an honor. Who, who do you think was the strongest package design of all these wonderful package designs? This could be incredibly hard. This could be the hardest one I've ever had to do. So please let me know who do you think wins this kind of top spot amongst the group of students. I, I just have to tell you guys, I'm more than impressed. I've done probably 14 of these student design challenges and video reviews. And so I've probably reviewed over 800 different projects spanning all sorts of different graphic design types. And this one, this one has blown me away more than any other thing I've done. Your work has, everyone has done a great job. And, and, and I'm just absolutely stunned by your talent and your skills and how some of you guys are doing your eighth or ninth student design challenge and I'm seeing your growth. I'm seeing you grow over an entire year. And that excites me so much to see you guys grow and to see you do real, real stuff that can land client work or be a product. It, it's incredible. So I just love you guys <laughs> for trying so hard and doing so well. And so just be aware of the, uh, let me see if I can close all this down. The project-based class is coming next week. You get to do all these together with me. It's going to be coming on Udemy and Skillshare. And um, I'll be sending out a, a special discount coupon to all my, to all you guys first, when, right before anyone else gets a chance to, to, to take the class. So be ready for that. I'll have, I'm doing the intro video today, so I'm going to try to do all that today and get, get it all loaded up. So that new class is coming. I spent two and a half months filming this, 10 hours, 10 hours of stuff. You probably see me on Instagram posting a lot of these, you get to see kind of some of the stuff we've been doing. But we get to do all that in this upcoming class and we get to learn software, go through tools. And the advanced section is great for those who are already incredibly talented, but want to really see me go through a real client project where I'm doing 50 different things. We're doing 50 different, we're doing everything. So if you really want to go through that process with me, that advanced part of this course is worth the, the ticket price, even if you don't do the beginner, beginner level projects. And last things last, um, please leave a review if you're a Udemy student or a Skillshare student and you have enjoyed the time today, please leave a review on any of my classes that you've taken. It helps keep me going. It helps me do what I, I do for a living. Reviews make a big impact on my exposure to other students and being able to find new students reviews make a really, really big impact. So I'd love a review and let me know what you want to do for the next design challenge. You know, what do you have in mind and who do you think deserves the top spot, the top kind of uh, top spot for today. So that's going to be really hard to choose. 
So anyway, I'm going to read your comments. Just if anybody has any questions, I'm just here for a few more minutes. Then I'm going to check out for lunch. I'm hungry, all that chocolate, and definitely having chocolate for dessert today. So I'm just going to read some of your comments, just making sure. So if anybody has any kind of last questions, I'm going to hang out for another minute. Just hanging out. So if anybody has questions, I'm just here to answer. I'm just taking a sip of water. My mouth is so dry. That was a lot of talking. Whew, an hour and a half. <laughs> My voice is done. <laughs> I guess I also agree the amount of work put into this was mind-blowing. So just agree with um, Naaman. I guess that's how you pronounce your name, Naaman. You hang out for one more minute. So yeah, I'm really excited about this. I put so much work into this. I'm I'm so ready for a break. <laughs> um, but we get to conquer everything. I've the most popular design projects that you get in terms of client work or the kind of client work I've got in the last 15 years is represented in this class. So editorial, magazine, lanyards, conference stuff, package design, book design, badges, logo design, t-shirts, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, thank you. So I'm just gonna hang out for one more minute. Any last questions? Thank you for taking it. So thank, yep, thank you. Glad I could do this. Is fun. I really enjoy it. I really love being with my students, and you know, I try to be an instructor that's here for my students. I know some instructors are busy and they can't do this kind of stuff, but I I think it's really important to to be with your students and to help them out this way. Okay, well I'm gonna go ahead and check out and get some lunch and maybe eat some chocolate after all this. But once again, incredibly impressed with the quality and level of work you guys do. Think about where you're going to be a year from now and how much better you'll be then and, and how you could really be the top 10% out there of designers. That's what I want you guys to be, the top 10%. You guys are on your way. But anyway, love you and uh, thank you for joining me and I really appreciate all you guys do for me as a teacher.